My dear brothers, my dear friends, good morning. Good morning. It's a great honor for me to be here. And today we're going to speak about uh, overcoming the financial difficulties with Jesus and the spiritualism. We're going to learn how spiritualism may help us to go through this process, the financial crisis, and help live better, get more happiness, and uh, be as happy as possible in this planet. And spirits, the spirits tell us that it's a kind of different planet, uh, an expiation and trial and trials planet. So. Uh, it's, it's going to be very hard for me to speak to you in 50 minutes about what is spiritualism. I, so I'm going to invite you to read the Alan Kardec's books. Alan Kardec was a, a scholar, a, a very brilliant scientist, a, a teacher, and he wrote uh, five books, the Spirit's books, the Medium's books, the Gospel According to Spiritual, the Genesis, Heaven and Hell, and the Divine Justice According to Spiritualism, and the Genesis. So, each book of them that has uh, 500 pages. I'm not able to, to synthesize synthes it for you, and to compact uh, in just 50 minutes, where we're going to bring some, some tips and some uh, advices, so we can go through this this crisis, the financial difficulty. I know that in, here in America, those years have not been easy for you. So let's ask God to help us and Jesus to to teach us how we can go through this. So, in spiritualism, we're going to see that we may ask. Uh, the spirits help, but in spiritism we know that uh, we are created simple and, and ignorant with no knowledge. So God created us as simple as possible and we are going to evolve through the million of years. And uh, like in a school, we are here like in the classroom and uh, we need to do our homework we're going to, to answer the test, the examination, so nobody's going to come and do for us. So when we ask the Spirit's help, we're going to ask for inspiration. We're going to help for strength to overcome the crisis. We're going to ask for patience. We're going to ask for uh, humility and so on because we need to do what we are supposed to do. The spirits are not going to do what is up to us to make here on earth. So we, go, we are in a kind of classroom and we are uh, doing tests to see if we are good enough because we are not uh, spirits very evolved yet. We are like children and we have more evil on us than than the good actions. We are not really good. And in this kind of planet, uh, the spirits tell that this, it is a school, it's a temple, it's a home, but it still is a hostel. It's like a kind of purgatory. You know purgatory? Yes, like uh, we call in spiritual umbrow or lower zones. We are in the very different kind of planet. So we cannot judge God for the part of the creation that is the planet Earth. Planet Earth is just a small grain of sand in the universe. So in this kind of planet, it's like a prison too. That we that are not good, that we have lived before, we are here to uh, expiate or say, or, or in other words, we are here like in a prison, uh, paying our debts. Like we were under a sentence, a judge sentence, and we need to uh, 
pay back what we have did wrong. So we're going to see that this is not a, a, a paradise yet. And Jesus has told us, my, I'm not from this world. My kingdom is not from this world. He told us that in this world we're going to have trials, we're going to have tribulations. So, even if we are rich or poor, in this planet we're going to experience the suffering. Anyway, there's no chance to, in, to not suffer in earth. So, how are we going to see this and change our point of view? Is going to help us to be as happy as possible. Because Alan Kardec has asked in the Spirits book, in the question 120, 921, 122, he asked, is it possible to man to be uh, completely happy on this earth? And the Spirit said, no. Because this planet is for trials and expiation, and the man is responsible for, ha for his happiness or his unhappiness. But he shall try to be as happy as possible in this earth. He's going to not going to be completely happy. No, we're going to have moments of joy, a lot of moments of suffering, of hungriness, and wars, and so on. But it's changing because the world evolves too, and planet Earth is going to become a, what the spirits call a world of regeneration, which is a better world that when the bad spirits, they are not going to be allowed to be here anymore. They're going to immigrate. They're going to go away from Earth to other planets where they will help the progress with the science, with the knowledge. Like in the Bible, we remember the legend of the fallen angels. Someday, some spirits came from the other world to Earth to help Earth to develop itself. So that's what is going to happen in Earth too. In some years, the bad spirits are not going to be allowed to reincarnate here anymore. And so this is going to be each day a better world when we're not going to experience so many suffering. But who is going to stay and who is going to go away? And we're going to see that Jesus has uh, talked about this when at the end of the times, it's not at the end of the world, the end of the cycle, the time of trial and expiation, and it changes to another cycle, which is the regeneration world. The Son of Man will come, and he's going to put on his right the sheep, and to the left the goats. And when the disciples ask, what is this? It's going to say, every time that I was hungry and you gave me to eat, every time I was thirst and you gave me something to drink, when I was homeless and you sheltered me, when I was uh, naked and you dressed me, and uh, when I was sick or in prison and you came to visit me, these are the ones who are going to stay. He only asks us for charity. We don't need to be Catholic, we don't need to be Protestant, we don't need to be spirits or Buddhists, anything. We need to be good. We're going to need to combat our selfishness. Because this is one of the biggest problems of the humankind. So, with this introduction, we are here in a classroom, and we may ask for help. Yes, uh, in Brazil there's a kind of uh, TV show that uh, people may, may ask the uh, help for the, for the universitaries, for the college, yeah, college people, or you may ask for the help of, of the letters, and we may ask for the help of the good spirits, and we may uh, read the Gospel of Jesus, we may read the Allen Kardec's work, the codification of spirituals, we may uh, look and answer. So. We are ready to be very successful in this test because we know what is good, we know what is not good. So, um, we have uh, to take care about richness, in matter of fact. 
we're going to speak about financial crisis, but first we need to take a look at the richness. Is it richness truly good? Is going to give us completely happiness? No. It's going to give us comfort. It's going to be to make my, our lives easier, but it is not going to solve all our kind of problems. And as a matter of fact, the richness, the spirits tell us there is a trial too. It's a test. And it's hard because it uh, makes our selfishness grow and our pride too. And many times that one that becomes rich forgets the hard times that he had on the past. He forgets his family, his friends, and so on. So, it's not bad because richness is a product of work and the work is a law of God too. But it's a test for us because we're going to need to face our selfish and our pride and even so be good. So, if we can be rich, if we can struggle the selfishness and we're going to be able to help more people, employ them, helping the, the needy, the poor, the churches. You're going to be very well succeed, but it's, it's a hard test. So, at the first point, like, like when we see in the Gospel, and we need to see that there's a, two, uh, some kind of two levels of advancement, uh, of, of evolving. <laughs> there's a young man that comes to Jesus, they reach it, the rich uh, young man uh, and he comes to Jesus and asks him now a man came up to Jesus and asked the teacher what good thing must I do to get eternal life why do you ask me about what is good Jesus replied there's only one who is good and if he wants to enter the life obey the commandments look my friends if we obey the commandments the Ten Commandments, the traditional ones, we are very good, we're doing fine, it's okay. But let's see that there's another level. And he, the young man asks Jesus what, which one, and then he replies him, and then he said, all this I have kept. The young man said, what do I still lack? Then we're going to see the second level of evolvement, Jesus answered. If you want to be perfect, go, sell your possessions, and give to the poor, and you have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. See? Two different levels. If you want to be like Francis of Assisi, like Chico Xavier, or many others that did not own anything, they, they did not want anything, had very simple life, that is a, it's a, it's a, very good, but only evolved spirits can do this. I cannot. So it's not a problem to have possessions, but you're not are supposed to be slave of the goods, of the money. We cannot serve God and richness in the same time. So you're going to have a richness, you're going to employ people, and like Alan Kardec said, instead of uh, giving how do I say smaller? Limosna? In English? Charity. 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 It's smaller? It's charity. No, not charity. charity. It's a, it, it, uh, instead of giving money to the people, okay. give them jobs. Mm. Put them to work, to improve, to develop themselves. So, so much better. Mm. And you're going to help. And you are supposed to be uh, living in comfort. There's no problem with this, but, but keep watching the selfishness. And we're going to see that um, there's a lot of temptations in the moments of financial difficulties. Uh, let's see. We have the temptation of uh, separating of our lovely ones. Many people get divorced because they got broke. Unfortunately, that's true. So, it's a kind of temptation, it's a kind of proof. So we are there, and we are supposed to, to write, answer correctly, and when it comes to the, the, the trial, the, the examination, we say, oh no, 
That's wrong. So you please help me with my English, okay? I don't speak very well. So help me whenever uh, it's possible. Okay. You, if you are so much uh, serious, I, uh, I am going to think that you're not understanding anything. No, no, no. So, while you keep, you keep understanding, keep smiling, okay? That's okay. Help you. Especially you. That's native English, okay? Help me. And uh, there's a lot of kind of temptation too. We are going to be tempted to uh, not pay the, the taxes. Now, we, Jesus told us, give to Caesar what it's Caesar's. And uh, we may become stingy. Stingy? You know, when you are very selfish and you don't want to give money to anybody, another kind of temptation, generosity is a, is a, a goal that we should achieve. Um, we may uh, be subjected to depression and uh, sadness. And many times that is the real problem of divorces. Not the lack of money, but because the, the person is so depressed that her life uh, becomes very awful and living with her becomes awful too. So we need to, to remember our, our brothers of Buddhism, they tell us that the two biggest problems in the, of the man are the ignorance and the attachment. We are so attached to things that are not permanent and so we're going to suffer, and we don't know the laws of the universe that we can learn in spiritualism also. So that's very good to understand and to be the attachment. We're going to be to talking about the attachment today. And uh, we need to take care about this. We show use the medication if possible. We show see a psychologist if possible also. If you no, Nazareno, I don't have money. Or every one of us has Jesus, the greatest psychologist ever. And we have uh, the temptation of suicide. And the spirits tell us that suicide is never the answer. In the other way, way it increases our problems. Because we cannot die because we are mortal. But we, we, we send a bullet into our brain that's going to damage our spiritual body, like in spiritualism we call it per, per, spirit, per spirit, and uh, there are many other different names. Uh, St. Paul used to call it a uh, spiritual body or incorruptible body, and uh, if we damage that body that is spiritual, that gives the shape to the body, that tells us the, the, the cells, the cells tronco, Stem cells. Stem cells? Well, you are going to be stomach cells, you're going to be blood cells, you're going to be bone cells, you're going to be brain cells. That's, that's that spiritual body that programs it. And if you damage it, the body, we're going to damage the spiritual body also. And many times we can reincarnate with the sequelas. Consequences. The consequences of the bad things that we do, did to our body. So that's why it's not God who punishes us, making us to be born uh, without uh, disabled, uh, disabled, or like uh, with mental disease, mental problems, uh, paralyzed, and many other consequences. No, normally we did that bad things to us, and we come with the consequences in our spiritual body, and we in the new body, they they are back. So. There's only one answer to suicide. Uh, there's only one uh, answer to suicide that is disappointment. Every suicide gets disappointed because he's, he himself sees himself out of the body, not dead, but suffering in many, many times. But of course, nobody is out of hands of God, and they are helping. And many times, the spirits have told us that Mary of Nazareth. Is the, is the superior spirit that conducts the help to the suicide people. So we shall never think about suicide. Everything passes. Sometimes, someday, Chico Xavier, which was um, the biggest, the famous uh, medium in Brazil, he wrote 450 books, 
the, his books we show read, especially the Andrea Luis series. It's very interesting and help us to understand how is the spiritual world. There's a, a movie, Nosso Lar, Austral City. There's this book in, in, available in the internet also, and many others. But he, uh, Chico Xavier, someday was very, very sad, a lot of problems. And then he asked Emmanuel, please ask for Mary of Nazareth some advice to help me because I'm suffering so much. And the spiritual mentor got away, then he was back and said, Chico, Mary of Nazareth sends you advice. Which one? Everything goes by. It's okay? Everything goes by? Goes by? Everything was passed. Everything passes. Uh, he, he, he thought, oh, this is a short answer, but it's okay, I don't deserve too much. And then he wrote in a sign put on the, his room, and every single morning he looked at the sign and see, everything passes, everything goes away. He said, Every, that's okay. And the bad things did go away. And he was very glad, very glad, and the man said, Chico, Watch out because all of this happiness. That's why. Because this is going to pass too. <laughs> Everything passes. The good, the bad, and the good thing. So, calm down. And so, it's true. If you take a look in our lives, and I have, a, have broken before, when I lived in Recife, one city of Brazil, we have a business, and we broke. We lost everything. We have been put off our home away. And need to hey, restart everything again. And today is like a dream, like a nightmare that never happened. Everything passes. So we need to have more patience. And we're going to understand that somehow, and uh, because of something that is happening, is not by the chance. We're going to see that uh, we're going to understand that we are going to, uh, first I'm going to say some tips to, to overcome it. Uh, when we are uh, a lot of that, and people are calling us and say, hey, you pay me today, and a lot of pressure, that is like a Chinese torture. You know Chinese torture, they say they get a prisoner, put a, a, a rope in his hand and his head, and uh, put it below the, the, some water and just a drop on his hand and said, oh, these Chinese people are crazy, this, it doesn't hurt. But after some hours, you go mad. So every single day, the people, the creditors, uh, calling you, asking you for money to pay, and you go nuts. So what is the best thing to do? You know that person that normally we don't like, then there's a lot of American jokes. Lawyers, yes. Ask a lawyer's help. If it's, it's a friend, it's going to be much more easy to say. And you're going to say to your credit, or oh, I am broke, uh, talk to my lawyer. That's wonderful. Because you're going to have peace. They say, they're going to say, oh, that one is broke. You're going to stop calling him this is not worth, and they are going to give one or two calls to the lawyer, and we will be more, very more patient. And we are going to be able to do some wonderful deals, uh, a lot of agreements, that in the appropriate time you're going to pay, if it's possible. And many banks, many people are going to receive 10%, 20% of the original debt. In Brazil is something like that, because they know that there's no chance to to recover that money, so a good tip. So ask the lawyers to be your help. They're going to become your best friends. And uh, if you don't know what to do anymore, try to work in something different, something that you may like. Because many times we lose our dreams, we lose our, uh, uh, our vocation, vocation? Mm -hmm. we, because we uh, want to uh, satisfy our daddies, our family, and we are lawyers, we are doctors, 
we are not happy, we need to, we want to be singers or painters, whatever you do, go for it. God will help you, will provide. And we're going to see that these tips to overcome it, and we are going to see that there's a good things in uh, uh, being without money too. We're going to understand that maybe this is an expiation. Maybe we're just giving back what we have taken from others before. Maybe it's a, an effect because every effect there's a cause. And uh, if you cannot find it this life, if you have worked hard, if you have studied hard, you have done everything you was possible, but you have broken, if the cause is not in this life, because we believe that God is sober, sovereignly just and fair and good, you're going to understand the scouts may be in other lives also. And uh, we're going to see that maybe the, the breaking is going to be the only way to break our heart that is very stoned by the selfishness and the pride like mine was. I needed to, to break. I was a theist. I didn't believe in God. I was Catholic, and I, how I could understand, because I didn't know spiritualism, I couldn't understand God, the laws. I used to think there's a lot of injustice. God does not exist. Like Epicuro, the philosopher, used to say that if God is good, and God is, is powerful, how can there be so many suffering in the world? Or God is cruel because He allows the suffering, or God is, is not powerful because he cannot uh, struggle the, the, the bad in the world, the suffering in the world. If we don't understand reincarnation, if we all don't understand that this is a different kind of world, it's a trial and expiation world, you're not going to understand God's justice. So, this is going to help us to be more spiritual, like I was. I was a taste, and then I looked for answers, and I found God in, again in the spirituals, gave me the answer because it's rational, it's logical, it's a, it's a man of science that wrote uh, all the lodgments of the spirits in, in, in five books and help us to understand so much better. And we're going to learn how to live with less money. It's good because well, after the crisis is over, now we learn how to live with just half of the money, or one third of, of the money that we used to spend before, when the crisis is over, we're going to have much more money left to save, to help others, to help the Spirit Santa's houses. Do not forget the Spirit Santa's, please. They need our help. How is it? And so, we're going to live uh, with less. We're going to remember of Confucius. Confucius used to say that truly rich is not the man who have a lot of money, a lot of properties of Jews, Jews. No. The truly rich man is the one that can be happy with little. It's okay? Mm -hmm. If little? You understand that? So that's the truth. Let's learn because it, it's easy to be poor if you always have been poor, but if you were rich one, once and now you are poor, you have no money, then it's much more harder. We know that. We're going to just tell about that. We're going to know what are the another good things and breaking. We're going to know what we which are our real friends and who are not. And we change our uh, the people that we used to visit and to, to be in, in the, the social world, you're going to know people, people more simple and maybe better friends also. Uh, I'm going to remember that Jesus is the good shepherd, good shepherd, shepherd, okay. shepherd is, yes, it's okay, but we think like that, but what is the good shepherd? Chico Xavier has told us the good shepherd, he has a, how about this, that thing that he used to put, push the, the chips? The staff. The staff, yes. The good shepherd has a, a big staff and he uses it to, to bring the rebel sheep back to the to the to the to the ground, to the crown of them. To the, and uh, and the good shepherd has 
a very ferocious uh, bug that he sent get this rebel ship yes and then comes back with in the teeth isn't it we don't like to be brought by the teeth but sometimes we need because we are almost ready to fall into the uh, precipice or the, the mountains so we need we still need in this stage of evolution we still need the pain to return to God many times because we are very proud we are very selfish and we need sometimes the sister pain to bring back us to Jesus so Jesus is a good shepherd and we need to remember some things that he said that we should not be worried about tomorrow because tomorrow we will uh, deal with his own problems isn't it and uh, the other I tell you do not worry about your life what you eat or drink or what your body what you, or what you wear is not life more important than food and body more important than clothes look at the birds of the air they do not sow or reap or store away in barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them are you not much more valuable than they who of you by worry can add a single hour to his life in the opposite way you're going to see that when we worry we die faster, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We die of anxiety, which is not good. And why do you worry about the clothes? See how the lilies of the feet grow. Feet grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in his, all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, field which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you Oh, you little faith. So do not worry, say, what shall we wear? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first, not only, seek first the, His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow you worry about itself. It today has another trouble, trouble of its own. So we have life, have this reincarnation, and Nazarene, if I die hungry, unhungry, there's no problem. Your spirit will go, you'll be continually going, going, and there's no, no problem. So, uh, but Nazarene, i be going to restart again. But that was the problem. When we reincarnate, don't we start again everything? So, let's start again in this life. That's not a problem. Because in the, when we break, when we are uh, broken, we're going to develop our uh, capacity of work. Sometimes we are lazy. And remember, we are here in a school, like in a, a gym, that spirits need to work out, isn't it? And how does the spirits work out? In the trials, in the struggles, in the problems. If our lives are paradise, we're going to be lazy, we're going to be fat, we're not going to develop our spirit. So that's why on earth has some kind of, of trials like this too. We're going to develop our capacity, capacity of work, we're going to develop our humility, so that's very important. Remember that the first uh, blessing, blessing are the, the humble because they is the heaven, the heaven, the heaven of God, the kingdom of God. Is the first blessing. It's not the second or third. Is the first, because our pride is a problem for us. And if it, if it are humble, it's going to be much more better for us. We're going to diminish our indifference. Is it okay? Diminish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, diminish. Our indifference, we are so indifferent. There are a lot of people dying hungry in the world, about 25 million, million thousand people a day dying of hungerness, of subnutrition. And uh, many others dying, committing suicide when you're doing nothing to help them. And we know that how bad are the consequences of the suicide to spirituals. And there are good, good things too, we're going to damage the pollution. Yeah, here in America especially, we are polluting everything, isn't it? Because we are 
consuming, consuming, consuming too much, we're going to have less pollution as well. And the best part, be broke is good because you get thinner. <laughs> you don't have so many money to go out and to have dinners and so on, and you're going to lose some weight too. It's okay. See, it's not the hell. There's some good things, and everything's go away. Everything passes. So we're going to understand as out of that uh, our karma is dynamic. So Alan Kardec didn't use the word karma. He only only used the law of cause and effect because he wanted to show us that the good that we do today changes our karma. So, like Jesus has told us, because she loved us so much, her forgiven her sins are forgiven, and like Peter has told us. The charity, the love, uh, covers the multitude of sins. Is it okay? Love uh, borrows all the sins. So, charity, not only love to be in love, to be passionate, no. Love, action, like, uh, and so on. And we're going to understand also that this is the divine providence as well. My friends, it is true, there's divine, pro the divine providence. Sometimes you don't believe too much because we we have seen, we have read before. Jesus has told us, knock and the door will be open, ask and we will be given to you. And Nazareno has asked Jesus to win the lottery. And I never went, never uh, got the, 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 the first premium. Huh? I never win. Why is that? Didn't, didn't Jesus told us that he, everything that we need that he's going to give us? Yes, but let me change the, the question. I, imagine a, a, a children of a five years children, child. And if you say to her, or imagine that I'm the genius of the lamp, like Aladdin, and you have three wishes, what are they going to ask us? First, they're going to say, Daddy, uh, I don't want to eat vegetables anymore. I just want to eat chocolates and gums. Are you going to allow this? Why not? For, for the child, that is the best thing for them. That is happiness. But you, like you know what is better for your child, you're not going, you're going to say no, no, you're going to have, eat soap and vegetables and so on, and organic and so on, something like that. Second, uh, second uh, desire. Uh, she so said, oh, daddy, I don't want to go anymore to school and I don't want to do homework anymore. <laughs> For them, this is good, isn't it? But you were going to say, no. No. Uh, at last, the third wish, said, oh, daddy, I don't want to have bath or wash my teeth anymore. Or go to the doctor or to the dentist. I don't like it to, to receive medication, no. vaccine. No. Vaccination? No. And who are going to say? No, my friends, you're going to have to do all this because I know it is better for you. So, like little children, we don't know what we ask. We ask for facilities that maybe are going to be a room, are going to develop our selfishness, and we are going to fail in our trial, in our test. So, God is going to give us the best for our spirit and not for our uh, child wishes. So he's going to give us inspiration, he's going to give us faith, he's going to give a lot of good things. And we are going to learn with Jesus about the attachment. Because uh, before I go to just to say that Alan Kardec has told us in the book Genesis, in the chapter 3, item 9, he is going to tell us what is the cause of all our imperfections. Do you know which is? Which is the cause of all our imperfections according to the Genesis? Pride. No, pride is a son of this. Oh. Selfishness is a son of it. Jealousy? Okay. No, jealousy is even all of them are a son of them, a child of him. Alan Kardec should be studied, not just read, my friends. We need to study the books of Alan Kardec. And you're going to see that Alan Kardec tells us the, the principal cause of imperfection is the instinct of 
self-conservation. The self-preservation stint. He stops over there. This is, is the last book of him but, uh, in, in life. But uh, we are going to see that we may develop this. What is the preservation stint? We have hungerness, we have thirst, we have the sex desire. That's okay. Uh, we have a lot of stints, but we have one that's very interesting and help us to, to be alive, which is the fear. Fear is good because we don't do crazy things because it's going to save our lives. But because of fear, we have we develop a lot of imperfections, like the selfishness. Because we have lived before in other lives, and we have experienced uh, ter uh, hungerness, uh, drought, uh, sickness, drought, and uh, winters very cold and. Uh, Lack, lack of, of food, we develop the selfishness. We need, we want to, to uh, save more things. We need, we have, we want to have everything because we are fear of uh, bad times, of rainy days. Because of the fear, we develop a cobiza ganancia. Huh? Greediness. Greediness. We want always much or more, always more. Greediness. Greediness. And then we go, why is that? Because we are afraid of being rejected by our family or friends because psychologists say that's the, the biggest fear uh, after the fear of being dead, of dying, <laughs> is the fear of being rejected. We are very anxious about being accepted by people. We need to receive the applauses and uh, we become wanting more and more because we want to satisfy our dads, our friends, our family. Because of, uh, look on the thing, jealous. It's a sign of fear too. You are jealous, not, it's not because you love that one, but because you are afraid that she may find someone better than you. Because you don't have self-esteem and you develop the jealous. You look at the, the cruelty. We see some, even boys in Brazil, we have in the, on the streets little boys with, with guns and they kill and they are cruel because they want to be feared because they are shaking of fear. They don't want to be defeated. They don't want to be challenged so they want to be famous of his, of, about this cruelty. Cruelty is, is a child of fear also. Like uh, cowards, you too. Sometimes they think we are humble. We're not humble. We are coward. We are convenient. To the, to the bad things, to the evil. That is not being humble. Being humble is to understand that we have imperfections and that we have some debts from the past. So we accept, we have resignation in this world. This is humbleness, humility. So we're going to see that even, even, you, you said, even, envy, you, when you see that uh, pop star, that uh, wonderful model, top model, a wonderful lady, She's really beautiful, gorgeous, a wonderful hair, a nice and brilliant teeth. And she has a wonderful life just taking photos. And uh, she uh, has a wonderful husband and uh, uh, a, a very easy life. And you see, oh wow, that's... And to, to kill all of us, beyond all of this, she's very thin. Oh, that's uh, it's not... Uh, 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 it's a, 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 compet a, a competition. A com competition. Huh? competition. Yes, it's a very bad competition for us. So she makes us feel bad. You know, are we all oh, not you know, you know, gorgeous as she? You know? So we develop envy. And what do we say? What do we do? We develop another thing. We do gossips. <laughs> and yes, you're going to say, oh, you know that pop star, I know that she has a problem with drugs, she has problems with alcoholism, and many of them suicide themselves. And we're going to speak bad from them, because making they get down, it seems that we get up. It just seems. So, see how many things, jealous, envy, cruelty, cowardice, even the good medium. The good medium, uh, he's, very, he's really a paranormal. But... Uh, when he wants to get the blouses and he uh, uh, goes for money and he doesn't use the medicine as well, 
and the spirits may get it back, uh, sustain, or to take away his manship. And what he does, he has self-esteem problem and becomes to fraudar. Fraud. 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 To fraud the phenomena. And some people say, oh, you see, oh, this madmanship is all fakeness. Because, because of one, we, we generalize it. You know? Because of one bad doctor, we say that everyone, no, no, they are bad doctors, but they want wonderful uh, physicians as well. There's a bad lawyers, yes, but they're wonderful ones too. And so we're going to see that the, the, we're going to have to defeat fear. And how do we do this? What is the best tool against the fear? Help me. Pray? Pray is going to help us, not enough. Huh? I'm talking to the incarnated. Courage. Courage. Yes, but of course it's the absence of fear, but what is the best thing to challenge the fear? Confrontation. Confrontation is going to help, but it's not the best. The best thing Faith. for Faith. one soul has been solved. Say that. <laughs> Faith. Faith is the best to to defeat the fear. Mm. With faith, we're going to face all the problems. And Alan Kardec has told us that uh, uh, undefeatable faith, unshakable faith, mm -hmm. is that one that he can face the reasons face to face in every kind of humanity, every era of humanity. And how we, do we get a, very, a much better faith? How do we can do this? Studying the knowledge, man. The self knowledge, yes, is good, but the knowledge of the laws that uh, of the universe. Why do we suffer? Where do we, where, what we are? Where do we come from? Are we going to have, have these answers very well explained in spiritualism? When we are going to have the, the root that is Jesus, the gospel of Jesus explained by the spiritualism, it's going to be much more understandable and it's going to be much more easy to follow and to understand. So that's why it's very important you to study. Study, you're going to develop a faith, and with faith you're going to be more charitable, you're going to be more generous, generous. you're not going to be uh, jealous, jealous, you're not going to be uh, a coward or envy, or going to say a lot of gossips and so on, you know? See how that's, that's why Alan Kardec has told us that we should study spiritualism permanently because it's, it's a huge philosophy. There's a lot of books and we shall uh, try to look for the, the knowledge man. So my friends, see, we're going to complain about a lot of things, but Jesus has told us about the attachment. Because we are attached to things that are not permanent, we're going to suffer because we are attached to things, to cars and so on, and to people. And you're going to suffer because they go away. Everything changes. Everything passes. And we're going to uh, complain, but we, go, we are honest. And I would like to have a brand new car. Yeah, but... And about Jesus. The highest spirit, the more uh, superior spirit that was on earth, the more perfect one, did he have a car? No. He used to walk uh, on, the, on the sand, on the high sun, hotness. And we are complaining about the car. Oh, Nazarene, I want to have a, a, a mansion. I have, want to have a, a house. And Jesus has told us, the frogs have holes, and the birds of air have nests. But the Son of, but the son of Man does not have a stone on, on his, when he may lay his head, head. And we are worried about houses. We want friends, we're going to be very upset with them if they fail to us. And the best friend of Jesus, every single of them, have abandoned him in the most important time. Only John, which many people believe that his friends is of a Assisi reincarnation, is going to, to be with Jesus on the cross. And uh, if you are solely there, if you are doing charity, we're not ever not going to be lonely. So let's, uh, well, I know that I want to have money, and Jesus of Nazareth didn't have money when he was uh, 
call it to pay the, 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 the taxes, he needs to ask Simon, Peter, to throw uh, a hook on the, on the lake and get a fish, and inside a fish there are going to be coins to pay the, the taxes. We are worried about uh, food, and he had to offer it himself to go to the other people's house to eat because they didn't have money. We are worried about glory, fame. And the glory of Jesus was a crowd of uh, thorns. thorns and a staff of cane and a thorn like a cross. We are, we are worried about uh, the, the, the place to be, burned, uh, to be born or to be buried. And Jesus was born in, in the middle of, of the, the animals, in a manjedora, manger, in a manger. And he had not a place to be buried. Joseph of Arimathea had to ask and, and land him a place to be buried in his body. We are worried about clothes. You want to have fancy clothes. And Jesus Nazareth was always the most excellent spirit in the earth. To show us about the attachment. He didn't have clothes. And even in the moment after the crucifixion, the soldiers <laughs> took his uh, clothes and uh, away and and jogaram dados, played the deeds to see how it's going to, to be with the clothes. He goes to the cross, no clothes or very small clothing. And we are worried about uh, friend, uh, time, I don't have time, I don't have time, it's money. But Jesus of Nazareth had time because when the little children come to him and the apostles want to, to hinder them, he said, no, let the little children come to me, do not hinder them. He had time for the children of other people, not his children, and we don't have any time to our children anymore because we are always running for money. And my friends, one of the best things of life, one of the biggest treasures, and today we're going to celebrate the Mother's Day, isn't it? Jesus of Nazareth, in the moment of the cross, he gave us even his mother. He said to John, Son, take this mother. Mother, Take this son. One of the best things that happened in life that is our mother's love, he gave to John, he gave to dear mankind. And the thing that is so important for us that is life, Jesus of Nazareth did give his life to all of us. Not only his death, he did not give his death. Sometimes it's easy to give us that. He gave all his life on earth, doing the good, helping others, living not for himself, but for his brothers in humankind. So, my friends, to finish, I would like to read the poem. We are on our time. There's a lot of things that I want to say to you, but uh, I will leave my website to you. May you find uh, some lectures in the website about depression. So, it's going to help people who is really speaking about suicide. Don't do this. <coughs> Watch depression. And Jesus, the, psycho, the, the, the greatest psychologist ever. A lot of, uh, uh, in the YouTube, you may find our lectures is www.nazarenofeitosa.com.br. I'm going to, to, to spell it. Nazarenofeitosa.com.br. You're going to put this on the video. So, Whenever this happens and we go see this crisis, the bad moments, the rainy days, and we ask, where is God? Let's remember the poetry, the poem, where is God? A scientist asks. No one as has ever seen him. Who is he? A materialist answers quickly, God is an invention of faith. A thinker would say sensibly, I cannot see God, but I feel that he exists. Nature shows clearly that the power of Creator exists. But the poet would say with the conviction of a person who affirms, because of he or she knows, I see God in a child's mind, in the sky, the ocean, and the light in the nature. 
I see God shining with the stars. In the eyes of a mother looking at his child. In beautiful nights by the moonlight, God's heart beats in everything. I see God in flowers, in fields, in stars rolling around the infinite. I hear God in the voice of the sweethearts and feel God in the tears of the afflicted. I perceive God in the world that forgives. I see God in the hand that caress, caresses. I hear God in creators and in flight. I feel God in peace and joy. I see God in a doctor who saves. I foresee God in the pain that unites us. I discover God in the wise man that tries to understand the human nature. I see God in a kind gesture. I hear God in the hymns believers sing. I perceive God in the sun, in freedom, and I see God in the plants and in the seed. Finally, I see God everywhere, that everything speaks of His powers. I discover God when art is expressed in people's love, and also I feel.